Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Techie, and in this video we're gonna learn how to create a scroll spy in Bootstrap 4. A scroll spy is used to automatically update links in a navigation bar based on a scroll position, and this is what a scroll spy is going to look like. You can see that as I'm scrolling down the page, the links are being automatically updated in the navigation bar. We're also going to add a drop-down sub-menu with a couple of links, which will do the same thing. And we can also click on any of these sections to take us to the corresponding content on the page. All right, let's go ahead and create the scroll spy. Now, before we get started, the scroll spy makes use of JavaScript, so make sure to include both Bootstrap JS and Bootstrap CSS files, and also make sure to include jQuery before including Bootstrap files. All right, so first of all, inside of our body tag, we're going to use a attribute named data spy and we're going to define our scroll area in the body tag. So the value is going to be scroll. And uh, we're also going to define a target, which is going to be our navbar class using data target attribute. Our class name is going to be navbar. Make sure to include a dot with this class name. And uh, there is another optional attribute named data offset, which we're going to set in just a moment. But before we do, let me show you what it does. So if I go back here to the scroll spy, you can see that as I'm scrolling down the page, the link is not being updated at the very top of the section. It's already overlapping the content. So we can fix that with the data offset. So if I go back to the scroll spy completed code here and add data offset equals 50, refresh the page, and then if I scroll down here, you can see that the link has been updated right away at the top of the page. So that's what the data offset does. All right, so we're just gonna add it here. Data offset equals 50. All right, so we've defined the data target as navbar. Now let's create the actual navbar on which the links are going to be updated. I'm going to go over this section very quickly. If you'd like detailed explanation of all the Bootstrap classes I'm going to be using while creating this navbar, you can watch my video called Responsive Navbar with Bootstrap 4. All right, so by looking at this cheat sheet, we can see that the navbar is created with four HTML tags, nav, ul, li, and a, and here are all the corresponding Bootstrap classes that go along with all these HTML tags. So let's go ahead and create the first one, nav, with navbar and navbar expand classes. Nav class equals navbar, navbar expand sm to make it responsive. I'm also gonna go ahead and add bg dark and navbar dark to make it dark. And finally, sticky top to make our navbar stick to the top of the page as we're scrolling down. Gonna close the nav tag. And next we got UL, and that one is just gonna use navbar nav. And the next two tags is to create the actual links. So we're gonna use LI with nav item and A with nav link. So let's go ahead and add all those three now. UL class equals navbar nav. LI class equals nav item. And A class equals nav link. Now we're gonna make this first link active. So just include active class right in there. Close the link. Close the li as well. Also, we're gonna add an href, which is going to target the section on our page. So in this case, it's going to be href equals number content one. And now I'm just gonna copy this whole thing to create more links. And uh, just change this to content two, three, and four. And we're also gonna add this text, content one, content two, content three, and content four. Okay, at this point, our navbar is almost complete. The last thing that we have to add on our navbar is the actual drop-down menu. 
So if we refer back to the cheat sheet, you can see how the dropdown menu is created. We're just gonna use a dropdown class on the list item. We're also gonna use dropdown toggle on a tag. And uh, we're also gonna identify our uh, dropdown menu with a dropdown dash menu. And we're gonna use dropdown items on the links in the dropdown menu. So let's go ahead and do all that right now. So our last link is going to be the dropdown menu. So we're gonna add drop down here and then inside of this li we're going to add the link so a class equals nav link oh actually we already have it here so it's actually that link okay so <clears throat> so for the content, it's actually not going to have anything because the actual link is not going to go anywhere because it's got sub links on it. So we're just going to leave it as the pound. And um, for in order to make it, uh, well, first of all, this is not going to be active here. So I'm going to delete all these. And then I'm going to say drop down toggle. And also, we're going to use an attribute called data toggle equals drop down. Okay, that's it for the link. Um, lastly, what we're going to do here, and we're still inside the li, is we're going to add the actual submenu, and that's going to be inside of a div class. So, div class equals drop down menu. Let's close the div down here, and now all we have to do, all we have to do is add the two links. A class equals drop down item. Drop equals number. <clears throat> These are subsections that we're adding here, so I'm naming them content four one, and that's going to be our section one. And the other one is going to be the same drop down item. And that one is just going to be number content 42, 42, section 2. Okay, at this point, our navbar is complete. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like in the browser. And this is what our navbar looks like in a browser so far. You can see that the drop down link is working. And um, now all we have to do is add the actual sections. All right, so before we move on here, I just wanted to fix a couple of things real quick. So instead of nav bark, it should be nav bar. And instead of stick top, it should be sticky top. So this is the reason our nav bar didn't look right. So if I refresh the page now, this is what it actually should look like. All right, let's go ahead and add the sections now. So we're gonna be outside of our nav tag and inside of a body tag. And all we're, all we're gonna do is create a bunch of different divs with the same ID as we used in our nav bar as links. So div ID equals content one for the first one. And we're gonna be using Bootstrap's class called container fluid for all of them in order to make the div stretch across the entire page. And we're also gonna use uh, different background colors for all of them. So for this one, I'm gonna use BG success to make it green. And let's also go ahead and add inline styling and increase the height of our divs with padding top and padding bottom. Padding top 70 and padding bottom 70 pixels close the div also i'm gonna go ahead and include a header with h1 name it content one close the header and lastly i'm just going to include a couple of paragraphs here and i already have this content ready so i'm just going to copy and paste it just to add some random tags inside the div 
Okay, and at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this whole thing. One, two, three, four, five, six times. And all I'm gonna do now is change this to content two, content two, content three, content three, content four, one, because this is a subsection. And let's name it sub subsection one. This one is going to be content four two, which is a subsection two. Subsection two. And for the last one, it's not going to have any ID because we're not using it in a nav bar. I'm going to delete this one. That one is extra. I'm just going to name this the end. And at this point, all we have to do is change the different uh, backgrounds so that they're all different colors. So for the second one, let's go ahead and use, let's see here. We're gonna use BG warning for this one. BG primary for the third one. BG danger for section one. BG info for subsection two. And for the last one, which you're not gonna be using in an app bar, we're just gonna use BG secondary, which will make it gray. And with that, our scroll spy is complete. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like in a browser. And as I'm scrolling down the page here, you can see that the links are in fact updating in an app bar. And let's go ahead and test our sub menu. Click on section one, section two, and you can see that all of that is in fact working. We can also go ahead and click on any of these uh, links in the nav bar and it will take us to the correct section. And that's how you create a scroll spy with Bootstrap 4. I hope you liked this video. Please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Clever Techie out.